Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here today with our latest episode of Draft Day Sports College Basketball 21 in the online multiplayer league of the CBGM. And for those who've been following along, you will know that we are the Michigan Wolverines and we are, well, into the point where we've pretty much completed recruiting now. This is my second attempt at loading this episode. Last episode went up with no audio, so hopefully... Hopefully I get it right this time and you can you can hear me loud and clear on the other end. And well, we're just going to talk a little bit about the recruiting. Um, last time we, we talked a little bit about some of the targets that we had to try and round out our recruiting for this season. And we've actually got to a point where we've played a couple of games now. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how that's going, a little bit how our re recruits from last season, how they're performing, what our expectations are. And we'll go from there really. So... Let's dive straight into it, shall we? And let's let's go straight to the recruiting class for for this season in terms of who we've tried to bring in. So we talked last time about Garrett Berry and how fantastic it was that we managed to get such an elite five star player this season, much improved from last season. And well, we we talked a little bit about how we targeted two other players who were good performers in the camp at Chicago and filled a need for us really. So. Obviously, I'm absolutely ecstatic that we managed to get JJ Robertson in. I think, well, I hope that he is going to solve our main problems that we've got at point guard this season, going into next season, really. So he looks like a really good passer, handler, pretty okay defense, good athleticism, and a good shot as well. So perfect kind of guy that I think will be able to run a system for us. And what I really liked about him was that he was also a top 10 performer at the Chicago uh, Prep Review uh, camp as well which means that hopefully he's going to come in and be and be ready now to kind of at least play and get minutes and and thank you very much for William on the the comments from the last episode and the other episodes that he's been following along been giving me some really really good tips in terms of who to target outside of the elite elite players and he he essentially said to me well you know if you're targeting guys who are doing well at camp you might not necessarily get a, a star out of it but you'll get a guy who comes in for four years and can play decent rotational minutes which is exactly what we want if we can get one star every single season that's the cherry on top but if we can build with decent four-year players and get that depth in i think it's going to stand this michigan program in, in really good stead going forward so really happy we got jj robertson i think he's going to be a massive improvement on some of the, the guard play that we've got at the moment the other guy that we managed to bring in was eric watkins so eric watkins i think i said last time is an interesting player because he's got good size and height but i think he can play Anywhere from small forward down to sort of power forward, maybe some centre minutes possibly with that rebounding ability that he's got. But again, he was also a top 10 performer at the Chicago camp. The only worry with me is his defence. I think he's going to be a bit of a liability there, which I think is going to limit him from probably being a starter to being a rotational piece. So we'll have to consider that. But I'm still really, really happy we've managed to get him in because gives us a nice bit of competition a versatile guy i think he can play a couple of positions so adding that to garrett berry i'm really really happy with how this recruiting class has gone i think we've got two guys who are going to be good four-year players for us in this college program and one guy who realistically is probably going to be a one and done but he fills the gap of sweet wine that we're going to be losing this season so really really happy with how the recruiting class has gone Basically, I think we've made a little bit of a step change from last season because last season we obviously recruited only three star guys. We're not in any competition. We could not compete with any of the five star guys because our recruiter ability was so low. But now we've, we've solved that issue. I think we're in a much better situation going forward. So speaking of how it's been going so far, let's dive straight into the schedule and have a look at how our first two games have gone. So we've, we've got a bit of a nice light schedule probably until we get to the Duke game. In December so we've been toying with a couple of things and playing with it but we'll start with the Louisiana game and I'll talk a little bit about the positives there so obviously it was a good result our offense looked pretty pretty okay on paper but it's mainly our defense that kind of came out on this one and that's fantastic to see that we've still got the consistent type of defense that we had last season that was really really important for us in building the program and it was the offensive side where where we had some gaps and I, I still think we've got some gaps there but still a good performance Turnovers is still a major issue. We just don't have a proper point guard and we're still turning the ball over like completely, completely all over the shop. And that's, that is a concern. I'll have to really think about how I, how I limit that going forward. But positives are that Sweetwine has is, is put up some really solid numbers in this game. 
Whilst Belair was shooting terribly, Giesen was shooting terribly, Ikona was shooting terribly, the bench actually put in some significant time and, and, and really did kind of help keep the keep the boat running a little bit whilst guys were out um, being benched. Buchanan was a bit of a liability as well, and that, that's a concern because we've, we've got a bit of competition with that position, but I thought Buchanan would kind of be the guy, whilst his defensive ability wasn't great, I just thought his shooting would be better considering how well he did last season. So I thought I'd, I'd start him and see how he got on, but it seems that maybe he's not necessarily ready to start for us. So, good result there. Got the win, basically beating these teams you kind of have to. But we got to Jacksonville, and, well, we, we suffered a shock loss, to be perfectly honest with you. We allowed them to shoot 53%, and we just basically got run over in, in the first half, to be perfectly honest with you, this one. Our offense was just non-existent. We turned the ball over again 19 times. Iacona was six turnovers. It's just just not good. Um, in this one, I think it's fair to say that Sweetwine also got into foul trouble, which was a bit of a concern. But Graves did come in and actually put up some okay numbers. I mean, he's not going to be the same type of player as Sweetwine. But it's nice to know that we've got someone like Graves who we can throw in and can kind of solve some of the issues for us, which is good to see. Positive as well is Geeson's numbers were much better. And, and he kind of needs to fill that, that hole of, of Larry Beak, to be perfectly honest with you, going forward. And, well, we're going to see if we can address his, his shooting percentages as we go along. I mean, I think I sent some instructions in already for him to try and shoot more outside and less of this mid-range stuff because his actual outside numbers look pretty good. And on the bio, his actual outside number looks looks okay as well. So I think he needs to shoot more outside than actually his mid-range. I think that's where he's going to be a bit of a, an issue for us. But, you know, we take this loss. We reviewed it. I think it's fair to say that, I mean, I, I tried in these first two games to play a bit of a Princeton offense because I felt that with the likes of, of Sweetwine and his passing ability, that could open up some interesting opportunities for us with that style of play. The thing, the thing I, I need to bear in mind is that his court IQ is not particularly that, that good. So whilst his passing ability is good, the court IQ is not necessarily good enough to probably play that strategy. So we're going to revert back to a more traditional style of strategy that I used last season that whilst the offense wasn't particularly that good, it, it, it kind of worked enough. We kind of got the ball into the main guys that we needed to and kind of lived or died by that. So I think that's what we're going to do going forward. Um, probably mix that up with a bit of motion because you need a bit of motion offense to kind of at least have two styles to play with. So that, that, that's the plan in, in terms of the strategy. Obviously, we've got some interesting tests coming up. We have Stanford, which I think is going to be a good test. They are a good program. And then San Diego, Florida, Dayton. I, I hopefully would expect to win two or three of those to be perfectly honest with you before we get to duke and duke are an interesting uh, team this year for those of you who've been following the, the the first podcast of the cbgm yesterday we talked a little bit about them and, and how how their defense looks like it's going to be fairly good so it's going to i think it's going to be a good test for our offense to see whether that this style of more traditional offense is actually going to work for us against the good teams so i'm excited to see how that that plays out really so let's move a little bit onto our roster and, and talk about how guys are kind of performing. And um, let's start with the guys we recruited last season. I think that's that's the main thing that I think people are interested to know to begin with. So Colin Brown was obviously one of our recruits that we brought in. I was I was, I was hoping that he might be able to fill the void of point guard for us, but his passing ability is probably not necessarily there in terms of where I want it to be. Everything else on paper looks really good. I love his outside shot. Love the fact that he can do a bit of everything and. You know, we're going to have to work on his shooting numbers. That's that's pretty clear. But when you look at it on, on paper, again, that three-point percentage, I, I want to see him taking more three-point shots just to see if that really is realistic. I mean, he's only taken nine shots there. So we, we need to work on that. But I'm, I'm ex excited about him. He's got good potential. We'll get him more into the outside against the mid-range game, and we'll kind of see how he does. I'm hoping that with him being a four-year player, I think, he is going to be able to develop and probably be a guy by the end of his four years who can play anywhere from point guard, shooting guard, and small forward, really, with, with these stats is what I'm hoping. That passing hopefully will come up, cool IQ will come up, and he'll, he'll be a good player for us. Another guy that we, we obviously recruited was Peter Graves, and we, we talked a little bit about him earlier. I love this guy. I think he is absolutely phenomenal. I'm really, really happy we managed to get him. He is exactly the kind of guy you want to play centre in, in the, the type of styles that we are playing. His shooting numbers are excellent at the minute. Obviously, he's not shooting that much, which is fine. I don't need him to shoot that much. But 7.5s, 2.5 rebounds per game, 1.5 steals per game 
in just 14 minutes is incredible. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy we've got him. So he kind of fills that gap. So if we do lose Sweetwine and, you know, he does go into foul trouble and etc., we've got someone like Graves who we can just basically throw in there. And I think he'd be able to do an adequate job. Obviously, he's not as good a scorer as, as, as uh, Sweetwine, but he, he kind of will be able to at least make it so we don't necessarily lose too much on, on either side of the ball, really. So that's, that's kind of the two guys that we, we obviously brought in, in this year. Other guys that we, we redshirted, I mean, Geeson looks like he could be a phenomenal player for us. I think we need to work on his shooting numbers, as I said, but I'm happy with everything else. I think he looks like a pretty good um, shooting guard for us. Good scorer, got an outside shot. That drawing fouls, I'd like to be up a little bit more in the, in the IQ up a bit more. But he kind of is, is a nice scoring scoring guard, and I, I'm, we need to work on his, his um, shooting abilities. You know where he's shooting the ball, but that that on paper looks like it could be good. I guess the real disappointing one is Sean Singletary. I mean, he's a one star guy. We're giving him some minutes at the minute, but I think there's probably a question mark as to whether we even give him any more minutes, and we just Maybe just try and get him to transfer out if we can at the end of the season. He's just not going to fit our program, which is a real shame because I thought we had some potential, which is why why we registered him last year. So that kind of brings us to talking about some of the more experienced players we've got on the team, guys we had last year. So if we talk about Sweetwine, I think the thing to say with him is I would really like to get his shooting numbers back up to where they were last year. You know, I... I I thought he would make a jump this year and go from probably you know, 13.9 points per game last year to hopefully 17 to 20 points per game and 10 rebounds and maybe a steal or so and maybe an, a couple of assists. Hasn't quite materialised yet. Still early days. We've only played two games, but really we need him to make that jump. If we want to go from being a, a good Big Ten team to being a competing Big Ten team this year, he needs to make that jump because we don't necessarily have the same amount of talent we did last year. and, and we need him to basically take that, that scoring to another level, to be honest. The same with Belez, really. Belez had a really nice jump in ability. However, his shooting numbers are still looking pretty poor this year. I, I'm hoping he will, will regress back to where he was last year and put up similar kind of numbers with a similar kind of percentages. But we'll, we'll see how that goes. He might be a player who possibly could declare this year. That's, that's another concern because he, his potential has jumped so much this season. He might be looking at his, his pro prospects. Elsewhere, obviously, Iacona is still running point guard for us. It's probably not the best outcome for, for us or for him in terms of his pro prospects. But we kind of have to make do. His passing and handling is probably one of the best we've got. The court IQ is a bit of an issue. His shooting numbers are down from last year at the minute. But again, it's still early days. So we know what we're going to get with him. He's playing out of position, to be perfectly honest with you. He's going to turn the ball over. But hopefully he's scoring... Numbers kind of and defense kind of makes up for it is, is what we're hoping for. You know, his ability to steal the ball, his ability to make a shot, get rebounds is, is kind of what we're hoping for there. So that's kind of where we are this year. I mean, we'll talk about the wing positions quickly. I mean, Buchanan is the guy we've kind of started. I think I'm going to lean a little bit more and maybe give Nick Campbell a bit of a shot. He was, he was pretty good last year in, in some of his limited minutes in terms of shooting numbers. Similar to Buchanan, I think. We'll give him a go. There is an argument to possibly be made that we move Belez into small forward and then maybe give Graves the starting slot. And it does leave us a bit weaker in terms of who we bring off the bench in terms of the front court positions. So we'll see how it plays out. Obviously, our schedule is, is interesting, as I've said. I mean, really interested to hear what you guys think. Do you think we're running the right type of strategy with, with what we've got at the minute? You know, are we talking too early in terms of the current team and where we fit? Obviously, we've lost our top 25 ranking based on those two games so far. So we'll need to try and bring that back. And also, are you guys as happy as I am with this recruiting class next season? Do you think that both those guys, Watkins and Robertson, are going to be big improvements for us? Garrett Berry certainly is going to be a massive help next season. I have no doubt about that. But always interested to hear your views. Your comments and ideas are really, really helpful because I, as I'm still trying to learn a little bit more about how to be efficient and, and and good in this game offense is definitely one of those things i'm really genuinely struggling with because it's so different to the pro game so any tips you have on that in terms of how this team might necessarily want to function in, in offense would be really useful i think i've got an understanding for the defensive side it's just the offensive side i i need to work on a little bit more but 
As always guys, if you've interested in following this as we go along, hit the uh, subscribe button, hit the like button if you're enjoying the episode so far, and always interested to hear your thoughts, comments, and, and advice. It's really, really helpful for me as I try and learn a bit more about this game, and hopefully take Michigan to the next level.